I'm going to show you how to set up notifications on a window manager or any other environment that doesn't have notifications already there by default. If you want to be using notifications in shell scripts or you just want to be receiving them from applications when they send them, you're going to need two different things. The first of which is a notification library and the second of which is a notification server. And these both serve their own purpose. So if I call a script here that's going to send me a notification, my word lookup script, there's actually two things going on here. The first of which being that notification library libnotify that provides the notify send command, which is the command that I'm actually sending the text with to this notification. So the word and the definition of it, the body of the notification here, that is with notify-send, which is from libnotify. And then the look and feel of the notification and how it behaves, that is with a notification server. And I'm using Dunst, so that's what I'm going to show you how to set up today. Um, it's pretty minimal, but it's also super highly configurable. Um, no matter what your racing aesthetic style looks like, you could probably make it work. Um, here's the GitHub for it. And yeah, as you can see in their screenshots, I mean, really there's all sorts of different stuff you can get it to do. Um, it's minimal, but still it's configurable enough that you could probably make it work. But if you don't like it, then there are other notification servers available and you could go through and, you know, try them out, figure out what you like. Um, some, even if you're on, you know, a specific environment like LXQT, if you want their notification daemon, you could get that or the one for Mate, etc. But anyways, I'm going to go over Dunst today. And the first thing to do, if if you don't already have these programs is just install them. So lib notify and don't, you probably already have lib notify installed. Uh, since it's actually a dependency for a lot of other applications, but Dunst you might not, so you can go ahead and get that. And then what you're going to want to do is make sure you actually have Dunst running. So if you just want to test it out, you could just go ahead and start it in your terminal there. But if you want it to auto start, you could stick it in your Xenate RC, or if you have a auto start patch for DWM, put it there, or even a login script, or um, as the Arch Wiki uh, advises, you could just make it a debug service if you prefer to do that. Um, however you want to start it, you will need it running in order to actually receive notifications with that notify send command. So um, just to actually show you how notify send works, uh, if I just use notify send here, I can give it some text. That's the uh, absolute bare minimum you would need to do. So if I just give it, you know, the word test, we get a notification that says test. Um, I could also give it, you know, a body to that notification. So I could say, you know, here's some, here's some random text here. Go ahead and send that. And that's actually the body inside the application. Uh, application notification. Um, the other stuff you can do with notify send. So I could actually give it an icon if I wanted to. I could go ahead and give it like um, a uh, dash i and then home bread and then bread svg. I downloaded an image of some bread, so I could use this for the example. So you can actually give it an icon. Um, you also have these urgency levels with notify send. So you can use dash u for urgency level, and then you have low, normal, and critical. And those are all going to change the appearance once you have that configured with Dunst. So for example, that's a slightly different, different appearance than my normal level notifications. And then I could also give it a critical here, and that's going to be a completely different appearance. So onto Dunst. Once you have it installed and you have it running, um, you should have a configuration folder for it, uh, config Dunst, and then it should give you a Dunst RC. Um, if you don't have that Dunst RC, you can just go ahead and grab that from their GitHub here. Uh, it should be, yeah, Dunst RC. So you could just copy this file in if you don't already have it. Um, and it's worth pointing out, Dunst has absolutely excellent documentation here. So if there's anything you're wondering how to do that you can't quite figure out, uh, this documentation really fully explains all of the configuration for Dunst. But I'm going to give you a quick overview here to get you started with it. So um, this is my Dunst configuration, which... Uh, is pretty minimal. I haven't really set up a ton of stuff other than, you know, just uh, the aesthetic of it. Um, so the main things going on are the geometry. So these lines here for width, height, offset, uh, you know, padding, gap size, um, the transparency, I have that set, the frame width and the frame color. I have a default frame color. And then for my urgency critical notifications, I have a red frame color. And then I have icon size. If I ever use an icon, I have a markdown format for it, the default formatting setup. I have colors set up and I'm actually getting my colors done via Pywall, uh, which I will put a link for that in the description. I've talked about it a bit before. I'll probably talk about it again at some point, but Pywall is just running a script. Uh, when I set, you know, a new wallpaper and it calls Pywall, it's just running a post run script to set colors for Dunst as well as a bunch of other programs. So that is how I'm getting colors automatically drawn. 
Um, and then I just have timeout set for default notifications. And it's worth noting, all of these can actually be overridden with notify send. So um, even though my urgency critical timeout is by default 15, I could overwrite that. So if I, you know, notify send here, uh, dash u critical, I can just use the dash t flag and I could say like 100 milliseconds, which is gonna be super short. And then it like goes really, really fast there. You can barely see it. So you can override your default settings, but these are the, de the defaults just in your Dunst RC file here. And um, speaking of defaults, let's actually look at that default configuration since it's quite a bit longer. Um, it's 494 lines, but don't fear because 99% uh, of this is comments. Um, almost all of this is just comments explaining how this works, which is great because if you don't already know what these settings mean, you should really be able to figure it out based on these comments. They're very, very explanatory. Um, but just a couple things to point out. So the thing with the dynamic versus constant width and height, um, this is essentially what's allowing you to have different sizes for different notifications. If you wanted, um, for example, if you have a notification with just one line of text. So if I just use a notify send, uh, send, and then I just do test, that's just one line and that's obviously quite a bit smaller than if I run my word lookup script or well, let me find a word. Um, if I now run that word lookup script, that's a much bigger notification than just the word test. So that is with dynamic uh, width and height. Um, whereas constant width and height would set it to just one size and only one size. So dynamic lets you set between two different values. So that way, um, you know, if I had a dynamic height from zero to 300, it could be a size zero pixel up to size 300. And then after size 300, it would start truncating it. Um, so that's a just short explanation of the uh, geometry there. The other part of the geometry is actually the positioning of the notification. So you can set it to be top right or, you know, top left or, you know, bottom right, etc. Um, and that's what I was saying about the documentation here, actually. Um, it shows you down here in somewhere. Yeah, so these are the different options for the origin and you could have, you know, center notifications if you wanted to. And uh, you can, of course, set for the different notification urgency levels where you actually want that notification to appear. So maybe you want critical urgency level notifications to appear in the center of your screen, but you want, you know, uh, low level notifications to appear up here, you could set all of that. So that's pretty useful. So that's the origin. And then the offset is just how far away it is from the origin. The origin is just going to be, you know, that default place on the screen that it originates. And then the offset is going to be how many pixels further down. So you can see when I have a notification, I have it pretty closely lined up with my windows here. And that's just because I have a specific offset number for it there. Um, scale, self-explanatory, just the scale of the notification. Notification limit, how many notifications will pop up. Um, we can skip through a lot of this since a lot of this, like again, it's explained there. So you can probably figure it out from that, between that and the documentation. Um, but there were a couple other things that I did want to point out here. So um, let's go down to icon here. Um, so when you have icons available in your notifications and um, I had for my critical level notifications, I have it using an icon there. Um, you probably want to set the icon size um, here, max icon size. So this is a pretty important setting. Um, I have my max icon size set to 32. Uh, if I open up my config again, dunst, dunst RC. Yeah, I've got my max icon size set to 32 here. So that way when I send a critical level notification, it's gonna be scaling it down to 32 by 32, um, which is pretty important because otherwise you're going to get huge sized images on your notifications. Um, especially if you're ever using notifications for something like album art. Um, like for example, in the, in the examples it shows here, right? This has an album art and your album art is probably not 32 by 32. It's probably at the very least 512 by 512, if not bigger. So if you're going to be, you know, making a script to call like a temp file for album art or whatever, or any other image file, you're probably going to want to scale that down significantly. So that's what the icon size option is for. You probably want to make sure you have that set to a reasonable size. That's going to look good next to your text. Um, a couple other things to point out. You can actually open URLs directly from notifications. So if you get a notification of a URL, you could click it to open it and you can just set your browser here for that. Um, you can also set your title and class of windows and that's pretty useful if you wanna be doing anything with a compositor. So for example, if I wanna like blur on my notifications, which I actually do have since by default, any transparent window, um, I'm using PyCom, is gonna get blurred and rounded. Um, so you could set that up with PyCom and I could even, you know, set like specific rules for just this window class. So that's pretty useful. 
Um, the other thing to go over here is the mouse actions and you can actually switch them around if you wanted to uh, have different actions. So uh, by default, left click is just gonna be close, right click will close all and then a middle click would do action. But um, for example, if you don't have a middle click cause you're on a laptop, you might wanna switch these around a bit. So you can switch them around there. And then uh, the bottom of the configuration here just has the uh, urgency low, urgency normal and urgency critical configuration and it's worth noting you can set other options in these beyond just the you know foreground background timeout etc and nor do you actually need all of these you could have a timeout that applies for everything and the formatting is just do you want these defined per uh, urgency level or do you want them defined globally and you can do either one um anyways uh that's about the main things in the dust configuration um, like I said, the documentation is super good here. So if there's anything you're struggling with or can't figure out how to do, definitely try looking at the documentation. But if you still can't figure it out, feel free to leave a comment. And if there's questions, I'll try to reply. But anyways, have fun setting up notifications. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Peace.